Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. So today we are gonna paint two paintings. As you can see, I have divided my watercolor journal up into two separate pages or to two separate sections. This is a six by nine Bao Hong watercolor sketchbook, 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton paper. I am also gonna be using my core watercolor paints. And today I have my two silver black velvet brushes, a size 12 and a size eight. So those are the supplies we're gonna to use today. And we are gonna paint the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. So in our area where I live right now and in a lot of the US, um, the Northern part of the US uh, across the country, we got to see a significant amount of the Northern Lights and that does not happen like ever. I don't think it's ever happened in my lifetime as well as it did the other night. So pictures upon pictures upon pictures online from all my friends and family members who went out and uh, made these lovely gorgeous images of the northern lights, the aurora borealis. So we are going to recreate that or at least two versions of that here. Now one of the things I noticed here versus lots of pictures I've seen of the online before is that these were very pink and purple heavy, maybe with a little tinge of green in some of them, but most of them were these beautiful bright hues of pinks and purples in the, in the night sky. Everybody was taking long exposure pictures. So opening up their camera, taking a really long exposure photo or using the night filter on their phone cameras. So they were also getting these really beautiful vibrant kind of colors in the foliage and trees and silhouettes and things around them so we're going to recreate some of that today so hopefully you're up for that journey um in my palette i have quadacridone magenta we'll just go over the colors we're going to use quadacridone magenta we also have dioxazine purple here I am definitely gonna be using Payne's Gray or a black you could use. I am gonna use a little bit of um, sap green as well as green gold for some of the foliage in combination with Payne's Gray that I'm gonna create. And then I may bring in some of this. This is just Thalo Blue and Payne's Gray mixed together, but I'm not sure yet. Um, so yeah, so those are my colors that I'm going to use and we're going to get started. All right. So the first thing, oh, one more thing I want to mention also is I'll be using some Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white, uh, to create a little bit of a star field in some of these at the end, totally optional, but definitely makes it fun and gives it a little pop of contrast. And I just love doing that. And I'll be using this very sophisticated, brush tool called a toothbrush to add those on there. Don't use your current toothbrush. Go find one of the free ones that the dentist gave you maybe. All right, so we're gonna start first by wetting. Oh, my brush is a little dirty there. Should be clean water. All right, so we're gonna wet this whole area. Now I'm leaving kind of this section. I'm not going to wet it because um, I am going to put some foliage over there along the bottom. And I'm going to start with, with this one. So we're going to do two different ones because all of the skies come in all different versions. I'm gonna start with just some swooping up purple. The main theme of the whole thing was everything was kind of swooping upward. And in some, it was just these beautiful bright colors were the significant factor kind of on what was going on. Okay, and now I'm gonna add some magenta. We're going to get much darker than this, but I'm just kind of mapping out my colors here. And then at the very top is going to be Payne's Gray. Kind of coming down 
into the painting. All right, so everything is significantly wet and we're adding in our color. So now we're gonna go a lot deeper. So I've just picked up a lot of Quadacridone Magenta, very dark, and I'm gonna just start filling it in with lots of swoopy lines here. And same thing with my paints gray. I'm gonna to try to keep this towards the top, except on this side, we're gonna come down a little bit. So with an exercise like this, you're doing a lot of rinsing your brush and wiping color off, because as you drag your brush through a field, you're picking up all of this color. And if you don't want that color to move too far into one place or another, you gotta wipe it off your brush. Try not to overthink this too, too much. All right, rinsing off my brush. I don't want this black that far down there. So I'm just pulling that color out. I'm gonna replace it with some pink. And everything is wet on wet, so everything should still be pretty wet at this point as we continue to add water, add color. And right now my brush has nothing on it. I'm actually pulling color off and blending these colors that are already on the page together. You don't always have to be adding more paint or more color, you can be just moving around what's already on there. I do wanna have a nice balance of kind of lighter pink areas and darker. I don't want it to be a flat wash. I'm trying to show you that I'm wiping my brush off a lot. Kind of pulling away color, pulling back color. And I am gonna have to add, I think a little pink right here. And as everything dries, we want it to dry nice and soft, like soft blends with just the suggestion of upward. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that at that. I'm gonna put a little more Payne's Gray right at the top to make it nice and dark. And then once this dries, oh, look at all of this I got over here because I wasn't paying attention, uh, but that's okay, we'll make it work. Um, once this dries, if we feel like we need to go darker on some areas, we definitely can, but just gonna blend that in just a little bit and let it do its magic, its thing on its own. Okay, this is gonna be foliage down here. So let's address this mess over here and we'll do another version. We're not gonna worry about it too much. There's gonna be lots of paint and water up there. Oh my goodness. All right, let's get it together, Shana. Okay, so on this side, we're gonna do something similar. We're gonna also, I think I'm gonna have some dark silhouetted trees kind of coming up uh, a little further this way in here. This we'll get to momentarily. Okay, so we are gonna add, I'm gonna start right from the bottom and go all the way up. I'm not gonna leave any white space. The trees and stuff will be all in silhouette. But I'm gonna take some of this green gold and add it to the bottom. You can see I didn't wet my page beforehand. But I'm just gonna take that green gold and I'm gonna go like this. 
and you know what a little phthalo blue just a touch and I'm just going to blend this upward towards the top and then we're going to blend out to almost just white and I want the whole page to be wet and then we're going to take our pink I do pink on this side and then I'm going to do purple on this side let's rinse off that brush because I want to get these really light Alright, and now we're going to start to I'm gonna start with the side of my brush, kind of bringing things up in this upward motion. A lot of this down at the bottom is going to be covered up. I want to make sure that green is up high enough that I'm going to see some of it. Alright, so now I'm going to take that paint's gray. So there's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's really just playing with a celestial sky. And if you give it a couple of swoops, it will remind you of someone's Northern Lights. They look so different in everybody's photos in real life, like real life photos of people, not professional photographers who are traveling to the North Pole um, or to those really higher level European countries to kind of view this. This is not what they looked like with the naked eye necessarily down here. I mean, you got a bit better view if you were in a really dark area with no lights. But a lot of people had to use a filter on their camera or do a long exposure to really see the vibrancy of these colors out there. So if you're not from this area, not to, I don't want you to think everybody's sky was like super bright pink like this. No, but their pictures were. <laughs> They're a little bit of editing. I am just actually rinsing off my brush and re-wetting this section a little bit. They're just drying at slightly different because of that extra um, Payne's Gray I put on. So I'm just bringing them all to the same consistency of dampness again so they dry evenly. Okay. Uh, back to this one over here. Now, if you are using 100% cotton paper, it's going to be a lot more forgiving than if you're not. If you're using kind of a lower quality paper, doesn't mean this can't be done, but you're going to see a lot of buckling. It's just the nature of it. It's not you. It's the paper. It's something you have to learn to work with if that's the paper you have available to you. Taping it down can be very helpful. You definitely, even cotton paper, you want to tape down often. Um, there's no way about it. No way around the fact that um, even if you stretch your paper, which is a whole other process that a lot of people don't do because it's a lot of work and papers are much better quality now. I mean, it's not a lot, a lot of work, but it is an extra step. And stretching your paper just means basically wetting it, like completely wetting the paper, um, adhering it to a rigid surface, whether it's through a tape, staples on the edges. Um, there's different tapes like gum tapes that are meant for stretching paper that don't come off your paper ever. Like once they're on there, they stay on forever. You have to actually cut them off. Um, and then letting it dry while it's adhered to the rigid surface. 
So you can stretch it and then once it's dry, then you can paint on it like you normally would. Um, like every, all the steps we just did now, you would just do those on it, but it's already pre-stretched. So it's been fully immersed in water and completely dried on a rigid surface, like stretched out to its maximum size. So oh, I don't like that. Although I'm probably gonna cover it up anyway. All right, so here are two versions. I'm going to let these dry and then we're gonna add in the rest of the foliage and silhouettes and it'll really make everything pop. And also our star field with our Dr. Meat PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I'll put links to this as well as to all the supplies and materials that I use regularly, my list of my entire palette of colors in the description, so check that out. All right, we'll be back in just a minute and work on our foliage. All right, we're back. Now, if you get to this stage and everything is dry and you decide it's dried too light and it's not as vi vibrant or as bright as you'd like it, you can just do that whole process over again over top of what you have here. Um, so adding more magenta, more paints gray, purple, the whole nine yards, painting it as almost as if this was a blank canvas, um, just adding those same colors in, in another layer, wet on wet. You do wanna make sure to do the whole section again, not just a little small part and then let that dry. It won't have that same soft transition um, effect if you do that. So just keep that in mind, but you can add multiple layers of the same thing that you've already done. If you wanna extend your black areas, you could do that and then just grade it out. Um, so now we're gonna do foliage though. So the first one we're gonna do with these long exposure pictures that people were taking, they're actually getting these really beautiful light reflections off some of the trees and bushes and it was just, it don't, you know, looking almost like they used a flash in some of it. It was just a lot of fun. So we're going to first start by putting on this green gold color. And these are nondescript trees, bushes. And then we're going to start to build in darker color beneath this. We're just going to let a little bit of that peek out with that brighter color at the top, reflecting a little of the light. You can also add some Payne's Gray to your sap green so you get really nice dark. You want it to be, I think, darkest down in the very bottom corner here. And you can make your trees whatever color or I mean, whatever shape you want, your foliage, your bushes. Again, most of this is in silhouette. You see a little bit of this greenery here popping up. I'm gonna throw a few like extra bits out here. I think we might do kind of some like telephone wire or something kind of coming across just to show you that, I don't know, everybody was at their houses in the city or in the country or wherever, but like in civilization. So you saw things like telephone wires and cell phone towers and the tops of roofs kind of sticking up as people were trying to take photos. So I thought that was, you know, they were unpolished, raw, like I said, not a professional photographer taking them just someone in their backyard and they were beautiful. They're all so beautiful. Make this a little lighter. I just wanna give this section a little texture but I don't wanna eat up all of the brightness that we did see. There we go, beautiful. So let's put like I'm using my, my size eight brush with the, I have a really great point on this and just some Payne's Gray, but making sure it's nice and fluid. And I'm just gonna run like, oh, I 
Probably could have done better with a liner brush here. Just too little. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very good, but it is what it is. And I'm gonna put trees up around it, but just two little kind of, here, we'll put some kind of pole over here or like structure. might be like some kind of roof or something like that. Perfect. Okay. So that is one. Let me just take this again. You know what I don't love about silver black velvet brushes? Everybody's like, oh, they're amazing. They do have great fine points on them. I have a lot of trouble with control with them in terms of fine details. So I don't like them for that. They're too flimsy. Um, they're great for holding lots of water and lots of paint, but I would pr much prefer a snappier brush for more fine control. Um, so that's just my two cents. Okay, so for this one over here, let's do some like tops of pines, pine trees. Let's start like, but I'm gonna have it kind of do a U shape. Um, Actually, I'm just trying to think, should I put like a house in here maybe? Well, we're going to give it a try. We're going to do like the roof of a house, like here. So just a slanted roof. Again, it's in silhouette, so you're not really seeing much of the detail. And then I'm gonna put a bunch of, I'll put a big pine tree here. I have these huge pines in my yard that like tower over our house. Another one over here. Don't worry, we're gonna fill in lots more of this space. So this is gonna be like, there's definitely more house behind here. You're not gonna see it. It's all gonna be like black down here. We are going to see some other pine details. You don't have to do all pines. We could do other types of trees too. In silhouette, let's put and here on this, I'm going to put a little structure for maybe a chimney. That you would see, there we go. And then over here we could do like more of a deciduous tree. Kind of a mixed tree situation going on here just around the neighborhood there we go and like a little bit of an idea of a house in here because some straighter lines and a little chimney kind of detail. So that's, those are super fun. I love it. I hope you love it too. Um, now we are going to put in 
our star field. I actually really love this one. I love the glowing green in it. And this, you did see a lot with people doing long exposures. Um, you got to see some of the other color. Everything wasn't in silhouette. All right. So I'm going to take some of my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I'm going to put a little bit of it in the cap. You can put it in a dish or whatever you want. And I'm just going to rub it around with my toothbrush. I'm going to dip my toothbrush in a little bit of water, just a tiny bit. And then, now this is the part where if you don't want certain areas to have stars on them, like your tree shouldn't have stars on them, you're going to want to cover it up. Um, you could use a paper towel in a more organic shape, but we're just going to start with this and I'm going to go across the top of both of these. And you can do it as much or as little as you want. And um, if you want bigger stars for some reason, you can use a brush instead um, and do a little splattering like this. That tends to be very inconsistent, but can be great for things like snow and stuff like that. If you want to put in any kind of like, ooh, a star or a planet that's a little bigger than everything else, you can like with a brush. So there we go. There's our beautiful star field on top. Um, let's take our tape off and see how it looks all together. But yeah, you can get really fun and creative with the silhouettes. You can do something that looks similar to what's around your house if you want to. Um, or just make things up or you don't have to include any house features, you know, it can all be mountains and trees and kind of more clean and pristine out in the wilderness. You could put a cityscape, um, uh, telephone poles, cell phone towers, kind of however you're feeling and what mood you want to portray. So my edges did get a little messy up there, but that's okay. So there they are, our beautiful northern lights and this is kind of what they looked like down here they weren't that traditional really dancing swoopy sky it was just these really bright beautiful colors everything kind of had an upward trajectory um but yeah so thank you for joining me today don't forget to check out the description leave a comment like and subscribe uh, the description will have a list of all of my supplies and materials that i use regularly and all of the colors in my color palette and then as we went along, we listed everything that we were using in this video um, as we painted together. So, uh, all right, take care, y'all, and I'll see you for our next watercolor journal page very soon.